flat tight ends. Good morning, church. Good morning, church. Whether you're watching us online, where you're in house, I would encourage you to stand up on your feet. And I want also to encourage you to come to the praise beat as we worship the Lord this morning. Are you ready to worship the Lord, church? Come, let's clap our hands as we rejoice for the Lord to open up the sky of our life, of our church, and of our families. Hallelujah. Father to all the fatherless And uncle to all the uncleless You knew we are unshakable You know exactly where we stand You will refresh the weary land You are the spring of hopefulness No love compares to the love that you have and no one compares to you alone oh, 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 the sky the heaven shining light of your fire upon our city break every chain you are And shelter to all the shelterless And number to all the homeless You are the tower of defense And you see the depths of all our hearts And you will restore the missing parts You are the one who makes things new For your life, I want you to receive it. Love and say, I do open the sky, the heaven shining. Light of your fire, I want to see it in Yeah. 
chapter 4 verse 12 it says that there is no other name that is given to us that we can be saved no other name but the name of Jesus and it says that in this name we must be saved what an assurance that we have this, this morning that in the name of Jesus we have salvation in the name of Jesus we have healing in the name of Jesus we have freedom if you believe that in the that this is your portion I just wanted to shout hallelujah and I just want to speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind Cause I know there is peace within your presence I speak Jesus And I just want to speak the name of Jesus Till every dark addition starts to break Declaring there is hope and there is freedom I speak Jesus Your name is power Your name is healing Your name is love Break every strong Shine to the shadows, burn like a fire. And I just want to speak the name of Jesus over fear and all anxiety to every soul that captive by depression. I speak Jesus Your name is power Your name is healing Your name is life Back every stronghold Shine through the shadows But like the fire
most high We worship you We worship you Surya Tata Between you and the Lord, you sing a new song, you speak to him. Just impressing my heart right this moment at this time. That we need to bring back and to speak back our family members in the name of Jesus. Wherever they are, some of them that lost their way. We're going to speak the name of Jesus over them. Yes, Lord. Some of us want reconciliation about our family. We're going to declare that this morning. Amen. We're going to participate in what God is doing in the house. Some of us want healing of our children. Some of us want restoration. We want to take this time and say, yes, Lord, there's power in your name. There is reconciliation in your name. I want to take this opportunity right now, right now, begin to call their names. Begin to call their names. It be your brother, your sister, your uncle. Say, in the name of Jesus, I bring them out of that addiction. In the name of Jesus, I bring them out of that sickness. In the name of Jesus, I bring them out of that depression. Come on, lift up your voice, lift up your voice. There is power in that name. In that name, they must be saved. In that name, they must be restored. In the name of Jesus Christ. Come on, lift up your name, lift up your voices. We call them out, we call them out. We call them out. We call them out. From the chain of addiction in the name of Jesus. There's freedom in that name. There's freedom in that name. There's salvation in that name. We're going to linger just a few more minutes. God is doing something in the room. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for the liberation. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for setting people free. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for setting the captives free. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for setting every mindset free. Suriya lava kuriya 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 but the Lord is reversing that in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We take that. Amen. We take that captive Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Riba Katale. Let faith arise in the house. Riba Kata. It is still the name that has no name. Name that is above every name. Name that is above every name. Riba Katale Vase. I don't know how many couples here are praying for a child. But God just impressed in my heart if you are praying for a child. Pray. Pray for He will open up the wounds of those that are buried. Just pray. pray. You look to the Lord. Just look to the Lord. Surya lavakaya sikiya tanaya. Hiriya lavakuriya lavakaya siya tatata. Hisiya tatata. Thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you, Lord, for what you're doing. We thank you, Lord, for the healing that's taking place. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for eyes that are opened, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for chains that are being broken even right now, oh, Father God. Bondages, oh, Father God, Lord, nothing can hold your people because you, oh, Lord, you, oh, Lord, you are their God. Lord, you are their God, Father God.
Don't just sing it for yourself. I want you to sing for your family and to sing for your members who want to receive the Lord. Sing for your child that needs to be set free. Your name, your name, your name is power. Yeah. For he's the name above all names, for you are worthy of. You can do better than that church. I 
seasons, the name that saw you through amazing seasons. Thank you, Jesus. We're not in any hurry to go anywhere. Let's just begin to build that altar before Him and say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Great is your faithfulness. Your mercies are new every morning. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Shut up. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Thank you for seeing us through time and time again. Thank you, Lord, for seeing our family through time and time again. Thank you, Lord, for the salvation of our families. Thank you, Lord, for the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Wow. Wow. Shout out, Thank you, Jesus. If you've got some thanks for him. If your heart is welled up with gratitude and thankfulness, why don't we just give a praise unto the Lord all across this sanctuary. God is so good. God is good, amen. God is so, so good, amen. Amen, amen. Before you, before you sit down, why don't you turn to five people and, and just welcome them into the presence of the Lord. Yeah, just turn to five people. Maybe you don't know them. Shake their hand, greet them. Give them a big hug. Maybe you haven't seen them in a while. Yeah, so good. We welcome everyone here into the house of the Lord on the Sunday morning. There's really no better place to be. If you're watching online, we welcome you as well. You are so, so special to us. We want to also welcome those who are here for the very, very first time. If that is you, we don't want to miss you out. We have a, a wonderful uh, gift for you and we would love to connect with you. So if that's you, why don't you just quickly put up your hand and our welcome team would like to just greet you. Anybody here like that today that you are here for the very first time, just wave it and our welcome team. Oh yeah, there's one over there. So good to have you in the house of the Lord. One here as well, I think. Yeah, someone's point. If you, if you brought a friend, you can just be like, ah, this person, this person. Just point and nudge them. There's one here, there's one here, just over here. Welcome team, over here, yeah. In the front here. Anybody else? Anybody else? We don't want to miss you out. Yeah, just here. Yeah. 
so good, so good. Anyone else? Anyone else? Just wave your hand, wave your hand. If you're watching uh, online with us for the very first time, why don't you put in the chat, that's me, I'm watching for the first time. We'd love to connect with you. There's a QR code on the screen here um, that, you know, if you scan it, we'd love to you to uh, just reach out to us and we would love to be friends and I think uh, get you connected, if you get, at, you know, get you connected into the life of our church, that would be an awesome, awesome thing. And you know, there's really no better place to be in the house of the Lord. So next week, why don't you bring your friends, bring your family, the Lord's presence is going to transform their lives. Amen. Amen, church. You know, as we've just had a wonderful time of worship, let's continue our worship with our giving. And you know, I've been hearing testimonies and testimonies over the past few weeks of how God has been so faithful in His provision to us. You know, um, there's a family that has been living um, uh, paycheck to paycheck, paycheck to paycheck, and, and you know, um, this person was very, was, was struggling to give, was struggling to, to lay down a sacrifice before the Lord. But out of obedience, he did, and he did time and time again. And every time that he laid down in obedience uh, what was for the Lord, he realized that very month he was blessed with something that he didn't expect, uh, a project that he didn't expect to receive. No, yeah, really, it's, it's, it, we'd see that time and time again that when we trust in the Lord with our finances, when we trust in the Lord with what He is going to do with what we have to bring to Him, he will provide, amen. He is our Jehovah Jireh, our provider, amen, amen. So before we give, um, you know, this is, this is something we bring to the Lord out of obedience. So let us be obedient. Let us give with a cheerful heart as we, as we just pray over this offering. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we just thank you. We thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you, O Lord, that you never let, let us uh, go in, in, in need, O God. The Lord is our shepherd, whom shall we want, O oh Lord? We thank you, Lord, that you are always there and always providing for us through every single season. And Lord, we just bring to you today, Lord, our offerings, our tithes, our missions, pledges, what may it be, O oh Lord. We just bring it in obedience before you, and may you use whatever we have in our hands, O oh Lord, to further your kingdom, to bless your people, to touch those who are in need, O oh God, so that people can hear your goodness and hear the truth of your word, O oh God. And may their salvation come quickly, O oh God, because of our giving as well, O oh Lord. We just thank you, O oh God. May there be even just wisdom and blessing over those who steward the finances, O oh God, who let it be used effectively and according to your will, O oh God. We thank you. Bless it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. There are so many ways to give. There's a QR code on the screen here as well for those online uh, and the back as well. There's also the other ways to give. If you cannot scan, I know some people have not been able to to zoom in on their Touch & Go apps and they do it now. So there is actually underneath your seat, there is a pamphlet, uh, a giving pamphlet that you can take home. Uh, it has a QR code and all our giving uh, options there as well. So um, if you need to, you can know, a little tear off. There's a little tear off at the bottom. You can keep that in your wallet uh, and it will be easy for you to scan in the future. Amen. So as we prepare our hearts for the word, why don't we just stand to our feet? I'm going to invite the worship team to just lead us into a reprise a song before we 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 listen to the word so let's let's just give our praise to the lord amen amen is the name of all names you are worthy of our praise and my heart will sing how great Sing with me how great is our God. 
are such a great God. And today, Lord, we're going to believe the power of the Holy Spirit will work among us. Lord, we pray that your presence will be with everyone, encourage everyone through the Word of God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be sitting down. Good morning, everyone, and those that are online. God is good, and we serve an everlasting God. We want to welcome back uh, the teams from Cambodia, Pakistan, and Philippines from their mission trip. I believe God used them powerfully. I would like to express my gratitude to the pastor and the leadership for providing me this platform to share the word of God to all of you. Once again, I am truly excited what God is going to do. Amen. Hey, last week's sermon was no other name but the name of Jesus. The scripture from Acts chapter 4, 12 reminds us, salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to mankind, but we must be saved. That is the powerful name. Now with this great message, the disciples took the gospel and performed miracles, signs and wonders in the name of Jesus. They touch lives and move beyond their boundaries. If we believe in the Word of God and those of us are baptized with the Holy Spirit, we are an effective witnesses for Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. All right. The Holy Spirit has given us tremendous power. Today, the title of my message is Come Alive. Not sound of the music, all right? <laughs> I, I just noticed uh, this picture today and my pastor told me, oh, you, the sound of music, but it's not sound of music, it's Jesus comes alive. Last week we were on the book of Acts chapter 3 and 4. Now let's take a closer look at chapter 16 and we will dwell in the uh, second missionary journey of Paul. The map on the screen will show you the road taken by the Apostle Paul and his team as they reach their final destination in Acts chapter 16. As we explore together, we will discover how the Holy Spirit will lead them. It also applies in our lives as we uh, need God's direction in our life. So in the second missionary journey, they began their journey from Antioch, which was their hometown church, all right? That is at Syria. Let's move forward with the first circle. So Paul came to Derby and to Lystra. Now at Lystra, Timothy was recruited to join them. And, and to join them. Now it's worth noting that the, the circle there, that during their first missionary journey, Paul and Barnabas visited Iconium, Lystra and Derby, which were the city located in province of Galatia, which you can see. To backtrack a bit, during the first missionary journey, Paul and Barnabas visited these uh, cities and they managed to convert many Jews and Gentiles to believe Jesus. There were notable signs, there were miracles happen, and for the sake of the gospel, they were not afraid. Unfortunately, during their visit to Lystra, they were unable to escape. They were being stoned, almost, almost died on their first missionary journey. Despite this, nothing stopped them because the gospel has the power and is unstoppable and they return to this second uh, missionary journey again is because they want to establish churches in these provinces now in verse 16 we want to see how the holy spirit lead them perhaps you can learn something about it from the map although it's map but actually you can learn the leading of the holy spirit now in verse 6 we see apostle paul intention was to establish the church now let's look at verse 6 and then they went through the region of Phrygia 
you look there, and Galatians, having been forbidden by the Holy Spirit to speak the word in Asia. They wanted to go to Asia, but then as they were traveling, now they were travel by faith, they trusted the leading of the Holy Spirit, they were sensitive to the guidance of the Holy Spirit. But the leading of the Holy Spirit is to ensure them, to, for them to stay on course. And this same applies for our life. First, before they could proceed to the next destination, they were forbidden by the Holy Spirit. Now, in some translation, it also means prevented, refused. There is this urging, all right? And there is this sense of hindrances. So that was the first part. Second, let's look at verse 7. The leading of the Holy Spirit, Spirit become increasing stronger and forceful. Now, on the border of Mysia, when you look up there, they try to enter Bithynia which is up there, all right? But the Holy Spirit, now this time, will not allow them. The entry into Bithynia was totally not permitted and it was a very strong leading of the simply, simply no access, no entry. Tabule maso, all right? Period, no entry. So if you enter, sometimes that's a leading of the Holy Spirit to us. If you had enter in, then you'll find that there will be great consequences. I believe they felt like an internal war was blocking them within their spirit. No entry. In life, sometimes there are boundaries you cannot go. Perhaps unlawful relationships that are not allowed to go in, but you persist in it will have great consequences. Sometimes the Holy Spirit guides us in the way to keep us on course. So this is the leading of the Holy Spirit. The second circle of the map, the, this will be the third leading of the Holy Spirit at Troas through a dream. So now, first they felt, the first two, they felt the Spirit urging in their heart. Then the forbidden is become more stronger, all right? Cannot permit, totally not permit. So the third leading of the Spirit of God is through a dream. So verse 8, it says, So passing by Mysia, they went down to Troas. So they traveled to Mysia and come to the coast of Aegean, the sea at Troas, all right? So... Somewhere like in Malacca or where, right? <laughs> At the straits there. During, I mean, just for you to imagine, all right, they, they are at the side of the sea. They, they are already at that place there. So during the night, Paul dreamed of a man from Macedonia, you know, begging Paul to sail across again, see and rescue the people of Macedonia. Now, after be being directed twice, Paul was at standstill in Troas. So, what was happening here? There was a, this dream. It's not a casual request, but a very desperate plea. And it speaks of uh, people in need. There's a spiritual condition over at Philippi, all right? It is total darkness, yearning for the light, of gospel and Paul recognized this so they discussed with the team and what must we do because of this directive directive call from God because they know they need to go to Macedonia what must they do in Acts chapter 16 because Acts chapter 16 is of great importance it offers us a glimpse how the work of the Holy Spirit, all right, to lead us to the right people, to lead us to the right person, so that you can convey the message of God. The message of God is very simple. Jesus died on the cross for our sin. On the third day, He rose again. This is the message that they go, the Holy Spirit guide them to the right place and at the right people to convey the message of God. Let us take closer now to see how three people in Philippi, which is now the modern day Greece, not everyone will ask you, what must I do to be safe? 
They won't ask you this question. But however, everyone needs to hear the message of God. They need to be saved under the power and under the name of Jesus Christ. First, after crossing Agen Sea, Paul and his companions arrived at the city of Philippi in Macedonia. They spent some time in the city, all right, during which Paul prayed and searched for the right people to share the good news. This one, this thing is, this thing also we need to learn. We need to remain in this city for some, some days. We may not remain, but you should remain wherever God has placed you, and there you have to pray and ask God and seek the guidance of God, who they should meet. So eventually, they met Lydia, who was searching for spiritual guidance. So actually, it's very simple. It is for, for Paul, he normally, he will visit the churches first. But in this case, Paul ministered to a group of women at the riverside. They found Lydia, who is a typical woman. She is a businesswoman, and she was running her own, own business. Now, the scripture tells us that, that she is, um, let me put it this way, she's a worshiper of God, but actually she is very hungry for God. There is this sense of hunger. Now, everyone that you meet, that you encounter, actually, they are hungry for God. The scripture tells us in verse 14, it says, it says that at, she was a worshiper of God. And also, same time, she was from Titeria in Asia Minor, which is today called modern-day Turkey. It is a place that is famous for its purple dye. Now, actually, this woman was from Titeria. It's a Jewish community. She was a Gentile at background. Perhaps, perhaps, she was very dissatisfied inside because of the paganism. And she was attracted to the Jewish religion. Judaism was and is actually not perfect. She worshipped God, but there was no satisfaction within. So at some point, she became very dissatisfied. That's the inner soul. The inner soul remains unfulfilled and keeps searching for the true and the living God. How was this hunger met? So what did Apostle do? What was his great method? Now, if you look at verse 13, and on the Sabbath day, we went outside the gate to the riverside where we supposed there was a place of prayer, and we sat down and spoke to the woman who had come together. They sat down and began to speak to the woman in verse 13. 13. It was so simple conversation, but it was so ordinary and yet very powerful. So the word translated speak here is not about a public speaking. It's just a conversation, a very intentional conversation. It is a word for everyday conversation. So that means, in other words, you and I can engage with anyone to tell about the gospel of Jesus Christ. So they began to chat about the simple message of Jesus Christ, who was crucified for their sins. It's the Christ and the resurrected Lord. And then something amazing happened in verse 14. The Lord opened a heart to pay attention to what was said by Paul. So no amount of persuasion or, or you can, you can uh, uh, words that can convince people to come to know the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. It was only through the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit comes to convict sinners and lead them to repentance. Your job 
And my job is to share the gospel. The rest you lead to the Holy Spirit. Salvation is God's doing. Lydia is a spiritual seeker. Paul and the team were looking for sinners. What we need to do is to tell the gospel, to strike an intentional conversation. It is a powerful conversation. Now, as this pro described the mission to the marketplace, the cradle of the church was the marketplace. From the preaching and public ministry of Jesus to the daily acts of the apostle, the central scene was the marketplace. The greatest need of our time is to share the good news to those who are seeking in our marketplace. Where is God placing you? You may be at your home, your community, or the job that God has placed you. That is your marketplace. The greatest need of our time, again I say, is to share the good news with those that are seeking God. The church needs to become more skilled in marketing Jesus into the house of God and, in, and so that they will come to know Jesus. Putting a welcome sign at our door and even a sticker at your car is not enough. We cannot wait for the world to come to our car. Cannot wait for the world to come here. We need to go to where they belong. We cannot wait for the world. Instead, we must go there where they belong. What does it mean to have an internet, intentional conversation? Likewise, for us to impact the world for Christ, we must penetrate it. John Stott said this, we are to go as event to penetrate human society, to mix with unbelievers and fraternize with sinners. It simply means we cannot be disengaged with them. We must be where they are and to be alongside with them. Jesus' strategy is always involve believers going into the world to penetrate into the places where they live and where they are. You All you have to do is to engage a simple conversation. If we don't tell, who will tell? If we don't tell, who will tell? We followers of Christ, we have a message to communicate the word of God. God has put you in strategic places and become the catalyst of influence where God has placed you. Our prayer each day should be asking God to help us to reach out to our community where He has placed us to live. Like Paul, the Holy Spirit guided him to Philippi. What is God and where is God leading you today to that one soul, just one soul? What does the, how does the Holy Spirit guide? What strategy does the Holy Spirit will give to you? What must you do to help people that have yet to come to know the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ? People cannot come alive unless you go where they are. Let me give you an illustration. One day, I was at my local market. I asked the Lord, how could I share his gospel with people who were busy mending their stalls and selling their vegetables and meat? I was afraid they will have no time for me. Probably they will say, hey, don't disturb us. Despite of my worries, I felt a strong desire that I must share the gospel to them as I saw them walking in darkness because there is the pain inside my heart. As I walked through the market, I lifted up my hands. Why I lift my hands? It's not I'm doing a spiritual exercise. Spiritual exercise, okay? God, make sure the ground is fertile. They, they will hear the word of God, that the spirit of God will invade them. I know it sounds a bit crazy, but I believe in God. I wanted Jesus to come alive. Now, marketplace, who will want to listen to you, okay? But his presence, when you pray, you must believe. Then the next strategy, I look and look. So the Lord impressed in my heart, speak 
to the um, those that sell newspaper, the elderly couples. So, so of course, in my excitement, I shared the gospel to them. Anyway, they didn't believe Jesus Christ. Uh, uh, was I feel? Uh, yeah, yeah. I did feel rejected. All right. So I look. And I say, God, give me another strategy. So the Holy Spirit gave me an idea to assist the couple to sell newspaper for every Saturday, at least for a few weeks, all right? My, then my friends, my friends, uh, staying in the housemate told me, you're crazy selling newspaper. You are working. Why are you doing all this? But I told them, I need to action now. I need to see Jesus, where Jesus belongs in the marketplace. Not necessarily mark, just any place, all right? I, I take this example from Paul. We must become all things to all men to save some. Now, 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 19 to 20. There is five different ways how he said, that I might win the more, that I might win the Jews, that I might win those under the law, that I might win those who are without law, that I might win the weak. Of course, he says that I have become all things to all men, that I may by all means save some. So that we need to be adept to the way people live and the culture with the main purpose. It's just not winning. It's because we want them to come to know Jesus Christ. We want them to have eternal life. Poor aim, it was to save some. So continue with the story of the elderly couple, when they saw my earnest persistence, I, I, I hope they are not chasing me away. And at the end of the day, finally, they gave me the opportunity to present the gospel. All right, this is a Mandarin one. I don't read Mandarin, but there are a lot of pictures here. So I tell them, hey, this is how you get saved. So the picture were enough for me to describe the plan of salvation. I use this, it's called the knowing God. We must not stop sharing, even we are not proficient in the language. But it is important your heart bring out the message of God. The Holy Spirit did the conviction of, to the both the elderly woman and the husband. Finally, they accepted Jesus Christ. All right? Amen. But it's not enough. It's not enough. So that afternoon, they say, hey, 12 o'clock, you must come. I, I, we need you to go to see my daughter. I say, okay, okay. Then, of course, you must take the opportunity. So I went. Immediately, I went to the daughter. Okay, the daughter was having a sickness, all right? In uh, a kind of sickness cannot be healed. And, and while she was talking to me, she said, I received a dream. And in this dream, I saw heaven. And whatever she described, it matches in the book of Revelation. Huh? Then I presented the gospel to her. She received Jesus as a personal saviour. Amen. It opened one door. Your persistency. Hey, I want to qualify to all of you, huh? I'm not a pastor when I share this gospel. So that means you and I should and be able to share the gospel. So I'm not a pastor then, all right? So why I share this testimony is so that you and I can go out. And after praying, she lived another few more years before she went home to the Lord. And what happened to this husband and wife? They still believe in Jesus Christ. They went to a connect group, went to a local church near my home, and they were baptized with the Holy, uh, Holy Spirit and also what they, they have that for the water baptism. They did the water baptism. Okay? Amen for that. You know, God is so good, you know. Now, last week, I went and verified again whether they're still a Christian. Yes, they are still a Christian. So my testimony is authentic. I'm not bluffing you or faking it out. So it's real, all right? Although the man has gone home to the Lord. But this wasn't the end of the story. So you see, I still persist on and, 
and follow the daughter. I pray that one day the daughter will come to know Jesus. From 12 years old, I follow her in the Facebook until today. <laughs> until she graduated and I still write to her about the good things about Jesus Christ. I hope one day, the next time when I share, that she will accept Jesus as a personal saviour. The people are waiting for you. The power is the power of conviction. Every time Jesus comes alive in every situation, when you give Jesus a chance, there is also the power of freedom. Now, the second person Paul and his team met was a very different person. She was a crazy woman, all right? They met a slave girl. Verse 16, as we were going to the place of prayer, we were met by a slave girl who has a spirit of divination and brought her own owner's much gain by fortune teller. So the, her spirit was associated with the Greek god Apollos and the oracle at Delphi. Uh, in short, actually some scholars say it's, it's the spirit of Python. Whatever it is, she is trapped by a kind of spirit. She's not only trapped by a kind of spirit, secondly, she also been trapped by the human master because the human master is using her to gain profit. So it's a very pathetic and it's a very sad story. You see, she is trapped two things, in the spirit and in the body. The slave girl lost her identity. Perhaps you may be, you may not be like the slave girl, but perhaps you may be trapped in all kinds of forms of addiction, trapped by other things. But today I got good news. You can be liberated by the name of Jesus. And here Paul was really troubled by this. Acts chapter 16 verse 18, and this kept doing for many days. Paul, having become greatly annoyed, turned and said to the Spirit. Now, the word trouble and greatly annoyed, some they translate annoyed means the Spirit, the evil Spirit was trying to veil Paul and, and Silas. So they interrupt the message for many days. Just imagine uh, you are sharing the gospel and, and they're like, oh, Jesus, Jesus. Day and night they follow you. I, I don't want this to be in my life too. But this, furthermore, Paul did not want the people to associate the God they worship with the occult practices of the girl. And what what she said was correct, you know. What she said was correct. She said, these men are servants of the Most High God and who proclaim to you the way of salvation. But it was uh, the spirit attached to the girl. It was an evil spirit. Paul did not want to associate it. So then the word here, it also seemed, another translation is called grief. The word grief simply means as Paul was troubled by the situation or very grieved by the situation because she sees that girl was in prison. The poor slave girl was in bondage. And this kept on going for many days. Finally, what the Paul did is command in the name of Jesus to come out of her. And it came out of her that very hour. So we know that the name of Jesus could liberate the slave girl. Immediately, the spirit left her and the power of Jesus set her free. She became an ordinary girl, no longer capable of making money for her owners who exploited her. So the name of Jesus is powerful. I want to declare to you that today, the same Jesus can liberate you. Luke chapter 4, verse 18. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has 
sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set the liberty to those who are oppressed. If you are oppressed and you have some form of depression, look to Jesus. Jesus will help you. The Son of Man, the name, the powerful name of Jesus can set you free. There are many people out there are struggling with bondage. One day my friend texts me and asked me to come over to her house. When I arrived there, I saw she was lying on the bed. She was in great depression. She took medication due to high anxiety, fear and insomnia. There were tears in her eyes. She said, please pray for me. Pray that God will deliver me. I felt a wave of compassion in my heart. It reminded me in the story of Jesus in the Gospel of Mark, where Jesus said to the little girl, I say to you, get up. But I didn't say to her, get up. I pulled her out from the bed. <laughs> All right? And help her to get up from the bed. And I say, Sister, please go and brush your teeth. I'll be waiting for you at the coffee shop now. I make her to walk and to go. I want her to action out. I want her to do something. And she did. After Then there's where I began to tell her about the power of Jesus. Now, the good news is when she is healed, the doctor certified her that she is healed. And she became a witness for Jesus. And over the one year, she led 10 people to come to know Jesus Christ. And out of the 10, I have privilege together, we share the gospel together. It's amazing. If you do something for people and you will see the power of God. Hey, I'm not a pastor yet, all right? I still share the gospel. Even today, I still share the gospel. In our postmodern age today, we will encounter more and more of these people. We must be very deeply concerned for them, care for them, do something because they are blinded by the powers of darkness. You and I, hold the key for their freedom. They can be liberated by the power of the Holy Spirit. We have seen the power of conviction, the power of freedom. Now the final one is the power of salvation. It's messed up. So when the power of salvation comes into our life, sometimes it messes up and disrupts everything. So when Paul and Silas commanded an evil spirit come out of the slave girl, her owners were very furious as the source of her income now is no more. It's depleted. So the slave girl has no more power to perform miracles and to perform the fortune telling. So instead of this, the owner made four charges and dragged Paul and Silas to the court. They were severely beaten. They were put in stock. But of course, they were praying. So that night, what happened? Violent earthquake. Hey, you went to the jail and suddenly got a violent earthquake, you know. This must be God, you know. So God messes up everything, you know. But what we want to see is this um, guy, this, this uh, prison office, officer, he... We see that he was, uh, you know, he was sleeping and suddenly he woke up, you know, of this earthquake, you know. And all the, all the first thing that the, the Bible described, uh, the prisoner has escaped. He didn't even think of the earthquake, you know. He was very, very afraid. You know, some of you are maybe like uh, the prisoner officer doing your work dutifully and highly, like me, uh, highly, okay, SOP compliance and suddenly everything turned upside down because of a situation. If you want Jesus to come supernaturally in your life, in your situation, and you've been, been praying for that, so be prepared for events in your life that may turn upside down. It was a strange occurrence for 
this guy, the jailer officer. So the first thing he saw was the prison doors were open. He was very afraid. Then he said, you know what he wanted to do? So verse 27, when the jailer woke and saw the prison doors were open, he drew the sword that's about to kill himself, supposing that the prisoner has escaped. So Paul said, hey, 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 don't die. Don't, do not harm yourself, for we are all here. So, so he comes trembling and fall before Paul and Silas. And what must I do to be saved? The precise answer we know, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be safe in your household. And this is the gospel we need to bring to our friends. I'd like to share, a, this is to end the testimony. I'd like to share a testimony when life can be messed up. Perhaps if you think everything is lost, don't give up hope. Jesus can help you. You need not to die like the prisoner officer. He was thinking it, that he need to die in his challenging situation. This young man, name is Chin Chi Leong, and around mid-20s. He was a construction worker, and while in his job, he fell down from a few story and ended up bedridden at the hospital. He injured his spine and the doctor told him it's only 50%. Even after the operation, we cannot guarantee whether you can, be, you can walk again. His future seems bleak as the doctor did not give him any chances. So the operation in those days were quite expensive and they could not afford, they only can afford 7,000 ringgit at one of our local hospitals. I'm very practical. I didn't talk about salvation. Let me pray that God will supply your need first. So confidently I say, God will supply your need, which is true enough, God supply His need. The second prayer, at my next visit was a very to pray for a successful operation so i go step by step you and i can do right it could be a, i mean god can heal him instantly but sometimes god work in a process the second then god could heal him instantly and this is not an evangelistic meeting you know but it's something you and i can do so I determined to continue he, to visit him. It was a successful operation. But he did not accept Jesus as a personal saviour. I did not give up. I still determined to communicate the gospel to them. As usual, he cannot speak. He cannot speak Cantonese. He cannot speak Malay. And I cannot speak Mandarin. So we are dog and cats, you know, talking. But it shouldn't stop us. I got a strategy. So I brought magazine with pictures of believers who receive healing. You know what I told him? You stare at the picture. Visualize that you can walk and be healed by faith through Jesus Christ. And the healing was very quick. So as a matter of weeks, he was able to walk. And in those days, it was a miracle. And as a result, the doctors documented his progress and took a video as a testimony to other patients. I presented the gospel again to them. You know what happened? There were tears on their eyes. They kneeled down. They, I said, hey, please, get up. I am not God. I don't have the answer for you. But they asked me the same question. What must I do? to be safe, and I told them, it is Jesus Christ. Believe in Je the Lord Jesus and you will be safe. As Christians, we have powerful testimony of the transformative power of Jesus Christ. It demonstrates the reality of the gospel in our life. Our Jesus is alive, and He is in the business to heal people. He the resurrected Lord and He is able to bring you out of all your situation. We are called to be the sword of the light, the sword of the earth and the light of the world. First, you must share to one, then to the families and then to a larger congregation 
or to people. We heard last week testimony, brother Michael Tang has been praying for his sister for nearly 40 years. And finally, she was willing to accept Jesus Christ. Don't give up. There is hope. Many of you can testify the goodness of God. When Teresa Chai got saved, it included her sister Elise, the youngest brother Jackie, and eventually extended to her mother and to the father, which I have the privilege to present the gospel to him. And by the grace of God and the power of God, he received Jesus Christ and he removed all the idols from his home. Now, not only that, some times ago, her brother and sister-in-law had a supernatural encounter on the way back from Kuantan. It may be a third dimension, I don't know where. As a result, the whole entire family accept Jesus Christ as a personal saviour and they were baptised with the water. It did not stop there. The beloved grandmother, the cousins and relatives comes to know Jesus. The power of salvation is not only one but the entire household and extend to others let us hope and to believe that our parents our siblings will come to know Jesus Christ as their personal saviour such of the power of conviction the power of freedom and salvation to those who believe in Jesus Christ God is good Amen let us arise You know, the businesswoman, the slave girl, and the prison officer were all parts away. But all of them need Jesus. The businesswoman was wealthy, but there was a hunger, was never satisfied. But it is through the name of Jesus. When I have an encounter with Jesus Christ, she was satisfied. The slave girl was despised. It is just like sin that trapped people. The master exploited it. It was double bondage. However, finding it, we too can find the name of Jesus and the name of Jesus will give us freedom. The prisoner life was messed up though the, through event that is uncontrollable. He, he, he cannot control the events. Some of you may be facing hardship in life maybe through challenging global economic situation he saw no way out or maybe you saw no way out but i want to tell you that jesus intervened in your family when he saved one his entire household you have the promise of god this is a reminder to us church church is made up of all sorts of people we must go there and we must be where they are First, let me address to those that have yet to come to know the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ and those that are online. You may be searching for God like Lydia. Perhaps you are like the slave girl in real bondage of sin. But that sin is worse. It is spiritual death and there is no eternal life. Today, I have the good news because your life matters to God. Sin separates us from God, which leads to spiritual death. No matter what you do, how much you do, you cannot earn your salvation. No good deeds can bring you to heaven. The good news is that Jesus died on the cross for you and pay the penalty of your sin and forgive your sin. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth and the life. And no one comes to the Father but by me Jesus only died for our sins but not only he died but on the third day he was resurrected that proved that he is alive the absolute truth is and that you need a complete trust like the prisoner officer say what must I do believe in Jesus Christ believe how do you receive you must admit you are a sinner you must believe that Jesus Christ can save you. There is no one can save you. No one can give you eternal life except Jesus Christ. You must believe 
that the Lord Jesus will save you. And you must receive Jesus to the confession of your mouth. If you want to receive Jesus in your heart, no one looking, let's close our eyes. If you need Jesus, just raise up your hand. If this is your first time you hear about the name of Jesus and want Jesus to come into your heart, we can pray for you. You can slip your hands up gently. Is there anyone? Jesus offers you. Now let's pray together if you are afraid to come or slip up your hand. Don't worry, you can talk to any of the pastors. You just have prayed this prayer. I'd like you to verbalize it out as you follow me in prayer. Let's all pray together and encourage. If you have brought your friend, just ask them, Hey, would you like to accept Jesus? Just pray. It's a very simple prayer because this prayer will give you peace everlasting and it is eternal. Dear Lord Jesus, I know that I am a sinner and I ask for your forgiveness. I believe you died for my sin and rose from the dead, which proved that you are alive. Forgive of my sins and I will turn away from my sins. I now invite you to come into my heart to be the Lord and Savior of my life. Give me peace and the love of God through His Son, Jesus. In Jesus' name I pray. Church, the service is not ending yet. I would like to turn the service around. Now, after you hear the various testimony and you want your family to be safe, come to the altar. Maybe you have your prodigal sons or daughters is so far away, stray away from God. All you need to do is cry for their soul. It's never too late to pray for them as long as they are alive. And some of you may need the power of the Holy Spirit to be an effective witness. You need the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You can go to my right and you ask the pastor to lay their hands on you so that you will have this power to go and share the gospel of Jesus Christ. Perhaps some of you have many needs. Some of you may be in prison of some kind of oppression, fear, insomnia, and abuses that you cannot utter. It is too painful in your heart and you are trapped within. And only Jesus can liberate you and can give you freedom. You can come, come. They won't ask you what is your problem or details. Je Jesus wants to heal you. I want you to know that Jesus loves you and wants to set you free just like the slave girl or you could be the prison officer. Life was messed up. Come, come to the altar. As the song is being sung, just come to the altar and receive healing from God. Wanna speak your name? If you have a need, come forward. Oh. Come. Oh, I just wanna speak the name of Jesus. I tell you, it is the name oh, of Jesus who will help you. Heart. No one is going to help you. It's the name of Jesus that has I power. Is peace within if your you presence. need healing, trust I Jesus. Jesus. Trust Jesus. Oh, I just want to speak the name of Jesus. 
every dark condition starts to break if you need jesus to help you come declaring there is hope and there is freedom will set you free i speak jesus your name is power your name is healing and the name of jesus is your healing name is just come power. jesus heal you let a pastor pray Make for you i don't we don't have the power shine but we believe in the power of jesus christ Those that are online, trust God. God will heal you. If you need healing, come. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. To every soul have captive by depression. If you are held captive by the Spirit of God, by held captive by the evil spirit, come. Come, let Jesus set you free by the power. In the name of Jesus. Your name is Hey, Jesus want to heal you. Jesus is healing you. We can restore Shine to the shadows. The light. Let me close in prayer first. Father, we thank you for this time. Those that are online, just trust God. God will heal you. Father, we want to pray for everyone that is here that need healing, heal them by the power of the name of Jesus. Lord, that your name of Jesus will convince them that you have power to help them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You still, we still can pray. We will, songs will be continued. Welcome you. Come. For That's the healing of God. Rain. You do miracles of rain. There is no one else like you. If you need healing, come to Jesus. There Jesus will no heal you. One else like you. For you are there. There is no one else like you. 